A Hint of Tint was primarily created by Robert Goodwin, also known as Flower Thief. The game is comprised of two modes, which are Story and Survival. The Story mode is a light, roguelike RPG, while the Survival mode is a true roguelike. Though, to access the Survival mode, you'll need to complete the Story mode first. Unlike many roguelikes, A Hint of Tint does place a lot of emphasis on its story. It manages to have a plot that is both interesting, simplistic, and convoluted all at the same time. And yes, I've realized two of those descriptors are a bit contradictory, but allow me a chance to explain my position. The basic gist of the story is comparable to the Epic of Gilgamesh, or the story of Noah from the Bible if you want a more commonly known flood myth. At the same time, the story feels convoluted because at the heart of the story is time travel, which means if you think too much about it, you're probably going to end up going cross-eyed. This gets even worse when you think about the vampire, since all the creatures of the tale are those that possess fangs, wings, or claws, and this game can only survive by drinking pink water. Even if you want to argue that vampires feed on blood, it wouldn't save the game from this plot point, considering human blood is roughly 90% water by volume. And since humans can only survive on blue water, our blood should be useless to the vampires. And if that wasn't the case, it would raise even more questions since you would have a race that had evolved to feed on a species that didn't even exist yet. But I guess you could argue the game has all kinds of nonsense going on, considering all the monsters in the game are female and can successfully breed with human males. And at this point, I'm nitpicking more than I'm reviewing. Regardless, the game saves itself from these story issues by having a well-thought-out cast of characters that have clear goals and motivations. And I'd even go so far as to say that many of the characters undergo some level of character development. Even some of the morals within the game, while evil on the surface, are rather reflective of real life once you look at them more carefully. As I said before, the game is a roguelike RPG, so be prepared for scavenging for items and figuring out how to use them effectively in order to defeat or outwit your opponents while suffering the least amount of damage. Though I wouldn't be afraid to experiment around in story mode since the only punishment for dying is being respawned at the entry point of the room you most recently entered. And yes, you will respawn with all the items you had when you first entered the room, so there's no risk to screwing around if you want to. Albeit, it can really suck if an enemy spawned in a bad location when you first entered a room, such as the example I'm showing right now. Well, the only real negative I can see with the game is that controls take a bit of getting used to, but you'll adjust in time, and the game is nice enough to give you tutorials as they become relevant. In terms of visuals, a hint of tin is rather pleasant on the eyes. The various character models are obviously custom made and are well designed and show that some time and effort was put into them. I'll go on to say that the dungeon tile sets are rather nice as well, even if the designs within the dungeon don't match some of the darker aspects of the story. But considering the nature of the ending, this may have been for the best. The soundtrack for this game is rather appropriate, even if it isn't particularly memorable. But for games like this, I'd say having an okay soundtrack is perfectly fine. Because quite frankly, I can't even think of many big name titles that have a soundtrack that really stands out to me. A Hint of Tin is a well put together game that is easy to recommend to others. Even as someone that doesn't particularly like roguelikes, this game was highly enjoyable.